For this next session, we're excited to introduce Edwin Rocks, the newly appointed CEO of Teledyne Technologies. Teledyne is a global leader in industrial technology, with over 14,000 employees worldwide, known for its innovative solutions across various sectors, including aerospace, defense, and especially imaging. The company's technologies are instrumental in enhancing global security, scientific research, and medical diagnostics, making a profound impact on society. Edwin Rocks brings a wealth of experience and a proven track record of success to his new role. Previously, as the president of Teledyne Digital Imaging, he led significant advancements in imaging technologies. His leadership has been marked by a commitment to innovation, strategic expansion, and fostering a culture of excellence. With Edwin at the helm, Teledyne is poised to continue its legacy of pioneering developments that shape the future of imaging and beyond. Okay, good morning, still morning. Um, good morning. Um, well, my job is, let's say, to bring you back from the first slide, from, the, let's say, a quasi-political discussion to, let's say, photonics again. So let me try that. Uh, thanks, Jose, and thanks, thanks for the, the whole team for inviting me for the keynote. Uh, I will do my absolutely best. And he asked me to give some, some, some personal, bring some personal color as well. So if I think about that, I, I would think about two dates in, in, in history. The first date is 1969. That was a very important year because it was the moon, the moon landing, before China, by the way. Uh, it was the moon landing, it was Woodstock, and it was the invention of the CCD, the charged coupled device, one of our first imaging sensors. So, a very important milestone. I can tell you that we hear a lot about CMOS, we hear a lot about CCD still. It's considered, let's say, a dinosaur, but I can tell you the dinosaur is still alive. We still do CCDs, we still have two CCD fabs in our, in our facility, where, and they, they go to space, so uh, that, that's happening. So that's one milestone. When I joined, uh, at that time, Philips in 1989, I worked for one year in laser uh, uh, communication, basically, laser, uh, semiconductor lasers. In 1990, I moved to CCD, so CCD changed, changed my life, to be honest. So that's one milestone. The other milestone I'd like to address is the early 2000s, where we had to predict how many, how many let's say, uh, uh, cameras would be on, an, on a cell phone. And the prediction at that time, this is only, let's say, what is it, 20 years ago, yeah? The prediction was 25% of the phones will have a camera. <laughs> okay? These are official documents, okay? I still have them, by the way. Maybe I shouldn't, but I still have them. Um, of course, you know that it is over 300, 400%. Most uh, cell phones have five, six cameras, okay? So these are, I think, two very important milestones in the past, which, uh, which help us to, uh, to bring things back to uh, photonics and how, how fast things go, much faster than we ever think. So again, it's my pleasure uh, to introduce Teledyne. Um, and by the way, we are not Teradyne, we are not a tester company. So my job is to bring Teledyne, the Teledyne brand, to make that more attractive and to make it well, more well known. We are business to business, uh, 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 business. That, that's, that's why we are sometimes a bit more invisible. Probably you know better FLIR, let's say. FLIR is a, is a, is a thermal camera uh, company. People don't ask, hey, give me the thermal camera. No, they say, give me the FLIR. Okay, if you talk about branding, that's a very good brand, okay? The other thing is, if you have, if you have a boat, you probably know Ray Marine. That's another very, very powerful brand. So that's also for Teledyne, yeah? So again, Teledyne, uh, let me try to give an introduction and here and there try to uh, bring it for the larger community and, and show some learnings from what, what we learned and what we can maybe help. And, and I, I got a lot of input from you. I had some great panel discussions, so that's, uh, that's very helpful as well. So we are a global sensing and decision support company. Um, we are a New York Stock Exchange company. Uh, we are an S&P 500 company, so we are on the radar. And again, our, our earnings will be in two weeks from now. So that is, uh, that's where we are, yeah? Uh, we have a very broad balanced portfolio. Uh, I will show that. Uh, we, we have a lot of vertical integration. Being balanced, by the way, that doesn't mean that you're challenged, let's say. Some, some balancing is, let's say, not balanced, okay? So that's, that's, that's happening. Uh, we have a proven track record. We are very hands-on. Most of our executive management are engineers, so they really know what they, what they talk about. Um, 
if you, I spoke about cell phones. We are not in the cell phones. We inspect your cell phone. We inspect the glass, we inspect the PCBAs in the, in the cell phone, but we're not making cameras for cell phones. We're in the high end, yeah? So you will see us in deep space. You will see us in deep sea. You will see us in healthcare. And you will see us in defense and security. So really high end uh, uh, applications where you cannot miss any bit, okay? Because it can be life threatening. Yeah? That, that, that's basically what it is. Um, if you go to our site, you will see this. It's, uh, it's not great, by the way. It's, uh, it's showing, let's say, our reporting segment. The only thing good about this is that we never change our reporting segments. So for investors, it's a very clear picture. We are very transparent. It's very clear what we do. So we have digital imaging. We have our instrumentation. We have the engineered systems where we make the underwater vehicles. We, make, uh, we, we, do astro we train astronauts yeah? uh, and our aerospace and defense businesses. The other thing here is that we are 75% commercial, we're 25% government, and read government as defense, okay? Mostly US defense, but we get a much bigger uh, European defense, and APAC, of course, where there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of pressure there as well, so we get more in that, into that as well. So it's 25% government, okay? Um, then our acquisitions. Yesterday, um, some folks spoke a lot about, let's say, cash generation. That's critical for us. That's critical for us because we like to buy companies. We bought, since the spin out of uh, Teledyne Technologies, out of the, the, the old Teledyne, I would say, we did do 70 acquisitions. And we spent about 12 billion in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, cumulative uh, uh, money, basically. So that's, that's, that's 12 billion. That's, and that's money well spent, by the way. All our acquisitions, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty accurate here. All our acquisitions, I can tell you, were very successful. Yeah? Why is that? Because we don't buy startups. We simply don't. Yeah? We pay sometimes a bit extra for a mid-sized company. Yeah? Uh, so the risk is, is limited. We partner with startups, and we, we attract startups. We, we try to work with them, but we normally wait a while yeah? till, we, till we do an acquisition. You also see, let's say, you see the bubbles where we did most of the acquisitions. And you see that most of the acquisitions were in instrumentation and in digital imaging. Um, the early days, mostly marine businesses, environmental businesses, and later on more in the imaging. And of course, the big bubble there, the big planet you see, is uh, FLIR. Yeah? And the, the smaller ones there, you see DALSA, you see E2V, all these, these acquisitions happen as well. Uh, our revenue growth, I will only talk about revenue, I will not talk about the earnings, but you can look, look at the stock, you know, when you see it for, for yourself. We generate a lot of cash, but you see here our revenue growth. We're now, we're now a six billion uh, company, a market cap of about 20 billion. We have about 14,000, 15,000 employees. So that's, uh, and, we, and we try to be more global. Yeah, we are a US company, correct, yeah? But we really think global, we are more global. We do very specific programs in certain countries, and we are considered, let's say, I always say we are more French than the French, okay? That's what we, uh, that's what we do. We love Spain, by the way. We, uh, we have two, uh, two sites in Spain, in Sevilla and in Madrid, and we like to expand there. So that's another thing to be here and to, to work closely with Rafa, who is our general manager, uh, running a lot of business, by the way, but located in Spain. Uh, so we're very, we like Spain a lot, let's say. Um, talking about facilities. These are our facilities, just a snapshot, about 10 facilities on this slide, but we have about 250 sites worldwide, and these are larger sites, not, uh, not accounting here the, 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 the sales offices. Why do we have so many sites for 14,000 people? That's because we want to be close to the people. Uh, our experts will not move. Let's say, let me give you one example. If you look in Chelmsford, uh, which is, I consider now London, okay? If you look there, we have glass blowers there. These folks will not move. No, you better be close to them. So we have a facility there. These are the old Marconi labs, by the way. About 900 people there in London. Yeah? And I can give you the examples for all the other sites. So we try to be close to our people. That's, that's basically what we do. If you look at our end markets, and I will go in more detail on the top four. So let me talk about the bottom four here, starting with defense. Defense, in our case, mostly means surveillance. Mostly means surveillance. So we try to 
let's say, see, you know, make, give, give eyes to the, to, our, to the soldiers and basically see what's happening. And uh, that's, that's what we do. Um, test the measurements. Uh, you probably know, know LeCoy as uh, instrumentation, oscilloscopes, protocol analyzers. That's part of Teledyne. Uh, the other part is, let's say, more environmental uh, test and measurements, which, which we do as well. Energy and infrastructure. Um, think about the uh, energy conversion. Think about fiber optics, not, let's say, at the, at the ground level here, but deep sea. Yeah, it's a different story. To make a fiber optic cable there, it's all, all photonics again, uh, but that's what we do. Yeah, we make these connections to, uh, to the, uh, for, for energy, energy conversion and uh, oil and gas. Yeah? And then last but not least, the marine business. This is not the ray marine business, this is the marine business where we make underwater vehicles going 600 meters deep, and that's not the challenge, by the way, to bring them back up, that's the challenge. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's, that's again what we do. And I go in more detail on the, on the top four there. Starting with, uh, starting with aerospace. And to be more sexy, I give a space ex uh, example. Um, these are just five, uh, correct? Yeah, five examples of, uh, of our space missions, uh, missions we were on. Yeah? In total, we did 250 in, 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 in total. Yeah? Uh, working, of course, with NASA, working with ESA, working with, uh, with the uh, Indi in, uh, Indian uh, uh, organizations, a lot of uh, cooperation. One I would like to highlight, and this is all, let's say, about being, let's say, an, a space telescope or, let's say, uh, looking at, uh, at exoplanets, you know, all these type of things are happening. Uh, three of them still have to launch, by the way. Plato has a lot of CCDs on board, the old dinosaurs, yeah? Plato still has to be launched in 2026. We did all the CCDs for that. Yeah. Um, let me give you an example of James Webb. James Webb, we have 95% of all the pixels. Yeah. So most of the images you see from James Webb, it was launched in 2021. You see, it's, it's uh, most of the thermal and the visible uh, images are from us. They are coming from us. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice thing to, to say. Um, not sure if you know too much about James Webb. It is about 1.5 million kilometers away from the Earth. It is at the, at the Lagrange number two point. So it's basically stationary with the, with the Earth. And it's, uh, it's moving with the Earth. And it's uh, ro rotating, of course, around the, the Sun. And the Sun is 150,000 kilometers away from the Earth, approximately. Um, this is looking back in time. This is looking almost to the Big Bang. Yeah, and by the way, the success of James Webb, which is also in development now, yeah, will look even to the Big Bang. Yeah, so this is 13, looking back 13 billion years in, 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 in time. Yeah, so we, we learn a lot. Every day we get a lot of new images and uh, we learn a lot about uh, the universe. The other thing in space, uh, what we do and is, and is very critical is uh, missile defense. Yeah? If something happens, yeah, uh, uh, it's observed from space. If, if, there's, is a, if there's a missile launched, it's observed from space. And you have very limited time to respond. So what you need are two things. First of all, you need to decide immediately what to do. Yeah? That means that you have to make that decision in the satellite. You have no time, you have no time to, to transmit data and information to back to the Earth and, 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 and back again. That cannot happen. So the, the decision-making is happening at the satellite. And the second thing then, it, that requires, let's say, that all the processing and memory has to be radiation hard, because it's a very harsh environment. Yeah? High and low temperature, a lot of radiation, so it needs to be radiation hard. So that's exactly what we do. We do most of it, by the way, in Grenoble, in France. Yeah? Space qualified memory. You see there the, the, the 16 gigabyte DDR4 RAM, which is uh, pretty unique for space applications. Yeah? In aerospace, by the way, we already have the 32 gigabyte, but this is radiation hard. And then you see the processing. So this is really, really critical uh, infrastructure we have. Um, another example is healthcare and life sciences. And I, Anna is here with me, Anna Nikhil. She is, she, is, she is running most of this business. Yeah? Um, we basically are active in all the different stages of healthcare, be it monitoring, be it diagnosis, treatment, and recovery. Um, 
You can think about, let's say, our dental X-ray imaging. You can think about our MEMS devices, yeah, which are basically lab-on-a-chip devices to do monitoring. Uh, you can think about the diagnosis, uh, uh, the, the, the CT scanning. Um, we, do, uh, we make very sensitive detectors so that the dose can be very low for the doctor to do surgery. And again, it's not so much the patient. The patient will experience this maybe once, twice in her or his life. Um, but the doctor is there every day, every day with his or her hands doing surgery. So you see it in the hands of some, some of the doctors, by the way. You see it. Yeah? So we have to make sure that the dose is low and the detector is still very, very sensitive. Treatment. We are in 95% of, I think it's now 98%, by the way, of all radiotherapy equipment. Sometimes that's just the magnetron. And we work here with the electas, the, uh, the, the variants, the, the accurates of this world. Yeah? Um, sometimes it's just a magnetron. Sometimes it is a subsystem. Yeah? And again, radiotherapy is still the best way to cure cancer, or some of the cancer. And then the recovery. There, you, again, the MEMS device comes back. Yeah? The, 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 the lab on the chip comes back, and it will be becoming more and more important. So that's an area where we invest a lot. Um, since Anna is here, an example about uh, women's health, which is becoming more and more important. So besides the X-ray and compression technology we have, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a balance between compression, so basically pain, and a good image. Yeah? Making sure that the pain is reduced and that you still have a good image, I think is a really good thing. And then I can talk about that much, in much more detail. Uh, that you see on the right hand side. That's unique IP, that's unique IP we have, and we get a lot of interest from the larger OEMs to, get that, uh, to make that available for, for women. So it's a really good thing. And on the left hand side, you see that we can do a lot of mammography nowadays uh, with, with thermal, and that's for two reasons. First reason is that these thermal devices are getting far more sensitive. The NETD, uh, the noise, uh, noise uh, uh, equivalent, let's say, is about 20 millikelvin, below 20 millikelvin, which is, which is a really low number. Um, and the other thing is AI. Thanks to AI, we are able to see a lot more of, 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 of the rest and, and, and basically investigate and see if there is any, any sort of, of early stage cancer or not. Yeah? So, this is a really, really important business for us, uh, and I, I think it's very good for, for mankind that we, we do these things. Safety and security. This is traffic. Um, it's all about safety and security. I just gave a traffic example. I can do the same thing with perimeter, uh, perimeter security, but this is a traffic example where, again, it's so important that you detect and you, 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 you track, you know, you, you know exactly, oh, this is a car, this is a pedestrian. Yeah, we, we, we can do all these things and we can help, let's say, to make life a lot more safer. You hear a lot about LiDAR in automotive. LiDAR will not do the job by itself, okay? You need thermal. You need thermal to, make, to get a safe environment in automotive. Maybe some people will disagree with me, um, but I, 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 think I, I think I'm right. I saw some, some examples, and I can show you some examples by the way, on the next slide. Look at this video. Yeah? You, you can see what you can see, let's say, in, in normal, visible, and you see what you can, uh, what you can detect in, in thermal. Yeah? And you see the deer on the right-hand side there. You don't see the deer in visible. You don't see it with LiDAR, by the way. So that is, uh, that is where we are. Uh, this will be more and more important. This is a volume business. Um, some of the volume business we like because we have to fill our fabs, you know? We have a, we have a big uh, fab in Golita, in Santa Barbara, uh, where we make our thermal cameras, and that fab needs to be filled. And that has to be filled, let's say, with volume stuff. So volume is mostly, in our case, automotive, okay? Um, then uh, traffic management, another thing, where we really uh, have to identification, classification, tracking, um, and you see what's happening. This is just one camera looking at the, at the traffic, and you see we are able to make a sort of 3D image. You see a top view there with all the cars, and, uh, and if you look at this screen, yeah, imagine that you are the operator. Yeah? You have to manage a tunnel. Yeah? You see so many images. You cannot do that as a person. So you need AI to help you with, uh, with that type of, uh, of, of management. Um, then, Coming back to Teledyne, let's say, and, and looking more at the DALSA E2V side of Teledyne, 
we are known as an inspection business. We do a lot of inspection business. Um, next week is the Vision 2024 show in Stuttgart. Um, that is all about factory automation. So we do a lot of that. Um, there's non-destructive testing. Yeah, uh, think about the X-ray businesses. Yeah, we, we do most of that. That's a nice spin-off, by the way, of the X-ray business for healthcare. So we, we, we make use of that as well. Preventive maintenance, coming back to our uh, thermal cameras. And then, maybe nice, we have one example which is not photonics. Ah, I have one example which is not photonics. That's, that's an acoustic camera. See on the bottom right, that's an acoustic image. And so not everything is photonics, Jose. Not everything is photonics. This is acoustics, okay? Um, so, but we map it on an, on an image. So it's a, it's a very nice thing. Um, think about that you're a technician in a fab, yeah? What is a technician doing in a fab? If he runs, or he or she, I should say, around the fab, yeah? Listening. The first thing what you do is listening. Hey, that equipment, hey, that's a very weird noise, you know? So that's what you do, correct? So you can train these acoustic cameras being like that. So you basically can train, uh, uh, let's say, people are still learning yeah, to, to run in that fab and to do uh, preventive maintenance. So it's a very, very nice business. We acquired the business uh, a few years ago. It's doubled already, and it will double again this year. So these are the, the needle movers, I would say. Uh, then coming back to ins inspection. So most of our semiconductor inspection, by the way, this is uh, business we do in China. This is business we do in Taiwan. This is business we do in Korea. Um, our China, ex China exposure, our China sales, I'm looking at my good friend here, um, is about 5%. In our, ex in our inspection business, and I get that question, by the way. I get the question from analysts, how much are you exposed to China? I get the question all the time. It's 5%, okay? Um, in our machine vision business, it's about 18%. Unfortunately, declining. Exactly for the reasons of what the, with the previous panel. Exactly for those reasons. 18% right now. So this is, uh, this is where we are. We do 1D imaging, we do 2D imaging, we do 3D imaging, uh, positioning, uh, laser triangulation, PCB, in, PCB uh, manufacturing, all these kinds of inspections where sometimes where nanometer counts, you know? We have to be very accurate. Um, so that's, that's, that's what we do. This is a very big part of our business, by the way. And this is a very high margin business because it's uh, very difficult to do. Um, getting to a sort of conclusion. Um, so what we do is, is wafers. We, not, we don't do the vanilla CMOS stuff, but we do everything on top. And we do some of the very specific processes like CCD and SPADs. And by the way, SPAD process is almost a CCD process. So we do wafers, okay? Uh, we make components, we make sensors, we do a lot of heroic design, readout ICs, yeah? Um, sometimes we make subsystems, and here you see the radiotherapy example, sometimes we make subsystems. Uh, sometimes we make integrated systems, where we add a lot of software, think about our automated, uh, automated traffic uh, systems. And sometimes we make a full system. This is the Black Hornet, the Black Hornet is a melee helicopter, we have several of them, and they do a lot of surveillance even in an automated way, even in clusters of, uh, in groups of, of black hornets doing surveillance. That's a full system. So basically what you see is we increase the level of decision support. But what we like to do, and I think the message I want to bring here, is that we bring that very closely to the components. And that has another benefit. Think about your IP. We just had an IP discussion in the panel, correct? Um, think you want to be a you are a customer and you want to protect your IP. It's best to protect your IP close to the sensor. Maybe in the chip, we can hide your IP in the chip. So we have a lot of custom developments for our customers. Let's say where we hide basically their IP, and that's 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 unfortunately that's a way of of, of going forward. Um, our BEMS foundry uh, capabilities. Uh, Luke was talking about uh, iMac yesterday. Uh, we have the, we have the, let's say, the iMac of, of Canada, where we work closely with. This is, uh, this is the C2MI, as we call it, and we have our own fab across the street. Yeah, so we do a lot of uh, MEMS processing. Uh, everything is going in the 300 millimeter direction. We are a medium scale fab. So if you want to, if you have a startup and you want to upscale, you should maybe talk with us. Uh, we do about 140, 150 thousand uh, wafers per year. 
Uh, so it's medium scale. We do 200 and, 300 and uh, 150 millimeter, and we are expanding now to, uh, to 300 millimeter. We get a lot of support from the Canadian government, by the way. They're, they're not too much in that CHIPS Act, but they do it in, an, in, a, in a very smart way. They look at the existing players, and I, I really like that approach. I really like that approach. Okay, and then the summary, my last slide. Yeah, autonomous systems. Everything is about automation. Let's say sensors are coming back. Let's say we bring back, back to, the, to, the, to the sensor. But be aware, you can make strategy plans. You can make all kinds of strategy. But be aware of the unknown. Yeah, you see the guy here walking, the pedestrian. You see he's classified as pedestrian. But the guy, well, he made it, by the way. He made it. He's still uh, alive and kicking. Uh, but he's... Uh, yeah, this is in Turkey, by the way. This is in Turkey. I, I was hoping it was in Spain. It's not in Spain. It's in Turkey. And the, the donkey is doing well. Okay? So that's it. Thank you. It is the, the first time that we hear such a very detailed overview of the entire Teledyne. The floor is open for questions. I know there are questions. I will ask uh, the first one. This is an economic forum, and we could see that there was growth over the pandemic. And yeah. everybody knows, yeah. but why? But we would like to have your lessons. Uh, what had you learned over the pandemic? Uh, many of us had losses during that time. Sure. So could you tell us something that we could learn from? Oh, I think, I think we, uh, in the pandemic, we were a bit uh, lucky. Um, for two reasons, I would say, uh, Jose, for two reasons. First of all, a lot of companies were suffering. So, uh, to be honest, we were able to acquire them. And uh, the, the, the second reason is that, let's say, in some of the, uh, during the pandemic, there was a lot of thermal screening, yeah? Um, that's something we do, correct? So that helped a lot. Unfortunately, uh, some of our healthcare business dropped because nobody went to the dentist, yeah? Nobody went uh, for, uh, for surgery. Uh, so that was a really a dip, but that came all back. It took a bit longer, but it came all back. So the, learn, yeah, the, the lesson, yeah, we were lucky, I guess. It's, uh, we always try to do, and, and even now, yeah, where we have a bit of a, a bad economy, I would say, we try to do better than the, the competition. And in some cases, we are able to buy some of the competition. So that's what we do. But the beauty, Ewing, is that it was not a bubble. So over the pandemic, there was a need for temperature screening. Correct. And after the pandemic, you continue growing in that particular Yes, segment. yes, 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 yes. We did, yeah, all the business came back, correct? Yeah, so that's, that's what happened. We have a few yeah. people, a uh, question in the public. Please tell us your name and company. Hello. Hi, Hello. Andres uh, from uh, ASE Optics Europe. So, great presentation. I really, uh, great to learn more in depth about Teledyne. So, my, my question is, as you're going into more and more integrated systems and even full systems, do you ever find any pushback from customers that you, you may be competing against your that's own customers? So, that's a very sensor? good question. That's a very good question. I, uh, that question was also good by Jose. Don't be... A, don't be a, in, um, it's a good question. The thing is, the thing is uh, I was expecting that exact... I was expecting that with the medical OEMs, yeah? Uh, think about the example I gave uh, about the medical panels yeah? uh, used in surgery equipment of the larger players, you know, the GEs, the Philipses, the, the Siemens of this world, the Zeems of this world. Yeah? Um, they didn't push back at all. They liked it because a lot of the processing is very close to the detector, and they, I should say they, like to concentrate on uh, the user interface, a lot of other things. So in, in sometimes we are, as, as a component manufacturer, a subsystem manufacturer, we are very afraid to step on the toes of the, of the, of the customer. Sometimes they love it, yeah? because they can concentrate on other things, like user interface. That's just one example. And I see it. I, you're right. Sometimes you get, we, have, we don't want to be in conflict with our customer. And we, we, of course, we respect that. But there are areas where we can push the boundaries and, and make that next step. And especially since all the processing is very close to the detector, close to the sensor. That is, I think, the key here. Okay? Then we cons that consumer thermal cameras, I'm sold. They should yeah. be in every oh, sure, car. Sure, sure. So w w why are they not yet in every car? I mean, the price 
pr the price entry cost is actually good enough to yeah. enter the automotive. Yes, what, yes. what are we missing? What are the hurdles there? Uh, it's, 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 I guess it's the adoption. It's the uh, we are not going. We are not going directly to the to the to the customer. Correct. So mm -hmm. there's always a step in between. Uh, uh, especially healthcare is a very. If you're in, you're in. Yeah. yeah. But it's a very traditional business with the FDA with a lot of other things. So it's very traditional. Uh, I wish it was faster. Edwin, your presence here, your presence here made the event better. I'm eternally thankful. That was a fantastic presentation. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Please.